NASA just gave us a closer look inside the Dream Chaser, and what they revealed might surprise you. Unlike the capsule-based designs of SpaceX's Dragon or Boeing's Starliner, Dream Chaser is a space plane built around capacity, and it's optimized for science. With 33 cubic meters of pressurized volume, nearly four times more than Dragon, it's not just roomy, it's purpose-built. That extra space means more power on experiments, more sensitive science payloads, and more flexibility for missions that matter. From biology and microgravity drug research to physics and materials science, Dream Chaser is becoming a lab in orbit, and it's designed to bring those delicate experiments safely home, thanks to its runway landing system. So, is this the future of space research delivery? And could it finally surpass the cargo capabilities of SpaceX's Dragon? In today's Tech Map episode, Let's open the hatch and take a deep dive inside the science-ready space plane that might just outmatch its capsule competition. Dream Chaser Tenacity boasts a total pressurized volume of 33 cubic meters, which includes both the space plane and its Shooting Star cargo module. That's nearly half the volume of the old space shuttle, even though Tenacity is only 9 meters, 30 feet long, about one quarter of the shuttle's length. Instead of a side hatch like SpaceX's Dragon capsule, Tenacity is accessed from the rear of the spacecraft. Now let's talk numbers. Dragon's pressurized capsule holds around 9.3 cubic meters, plus an additional 37 cubic meters in its unpressurized trunk. But here's the catch. The trunk isn't pressurized and is mainly used for carrying unpressurized cargo. Dream Chaser, on the other hand, combines 33 cubic meters of fully pressurized volume between the space plane and module, an advantage for certain mission types. In terms of payload, Dream Chaser with the Shooting Star module can haul up to 12,000 pounds, 5,500 kilograms of cargo, 5,000 kilograms of which is pressurized. While Cargo Dragon can carry slightly more at 13,000 pounds, 6,000 kilograms, it has a lower pressurized cargo limit at 3,000 kilograms. Sierra Space clearly designed tenacity to pack in as much pressurized volume as possible within a compact vehicle. They stretched the interior lengthwise rather than vertically, creating a long cylindrical space that's not tall enough to stand in, but runs almost the full length of the vehicle. Inside, various tanks and tech components take up room on all sides. For instance, at the bottom of the spacecraft, large compartments store the landing wheels. These fold in and out during landings. Interestingly, instead of using a third nose wheel like most aircraft, Sierra Space opted for a skid plate. It's simpler and saves internal space, allowing more room for cargo. When it comes to bringing stuff back down from orbit, Tenacity has a smaller return capacity, 1,750 kilograms, 3,860 pounds, compared to Dragon's 2,507 kilograms, 5,527 pounds. That's because only the Dream Chaser space plane returns to Earth, while the larger Shooting Star module is discarded after each mission. So even though Tenacity can carry up to 5.5 tons of cargo to space, only about one-third of that gets returned. That said, Sierra Space has chosen to prioritize pressurized cargo delivery over downmass return. This makes sense when you consider what's usually inside, critical science experiments and commercial tech that need protection and stable conditions in transit. These payloads support experiments on the International Space Station, studying how things behave in microgravity. Think biology, medical research, materials science, and physics. Clearly, the company wants to play an important role in supporting space research and industry. To support those missions, Sierra Space ran a key test to demonstrate that Dream Chaser can power, cool, and communicate with multiple powered payloads inside its pressurized cabin. This milestone is crucial for Dream Chaser's upcoming resupply mission to the ISS. During Joint Test 10B, the team evaluated three payloads that are being considered for the spacecraft's first official mission, Dream Chaser Demo-1. And it's not just NASA that's interested. 
Sierra Space is also working with commercial partners like Merck to take pharmaceutical research into orbit. A future mission will test growing microscopic protein crystals in microgravity aboard the ISS. These crystals form better in space due to the lack of gravity-driven flaws, giving scientists clearer insight into protein structures. That, in turn, speeds up the development of new, more effective drugs, including cancer treatments. Finally, Dream Chaser's ability to land gently on a runway, like a traditional airplane, means scientists can quickly retrieve delicate experiments for analysis without waiting for lengthy ocean recoveries like those used by splashdown capsules. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser stands out with its unique lifting body design. This advanced engineering allows the spacecraft to glide back through Earth's atmosphere and perform smooth, controlled landings on standard runways. One of Dream Chaser's most valuable features is its adaptability. Everything from launch and landing locations to mission length and vehicle setup can be customized to meet a wide range of user needs. It runs on non-toxic fuel and doesn't rely on special ground infrastructure, which means it can land on any suitable aircraft runway around the globe. Some experts even see Dream Chaser's Earth point-to-point -point potential as a unique advantage over SpaceX's Starship, especially since it doesn't need a massive ground system like Mechazilla to land. This flexibility brings major benefits. Payloads and crew can return from orbit quickly and safely arriving closer to their destinations, which saves time and enhances safety. The ability to land at different global locations also makes it easier for scientists around the world to collaborate on space missions. And when it comes to crew safety, Dream Chaser could be a literal lifesaver. If a medical emergency occurred on the ISS or in orbit, its human-rated version could rapidly bring astronauts back to Earth. Even in unexpected situations, like emergency landings, its airplane-like landing capability means it can use virtually any runway infrastructure available across the world. Sierra Nevada Corporation, the company behind Dream Chaser, is the only private organization building a spacecraft that lands like an aircraft, unlike SpaceX's Dragon, which follows the Apollo-style capsule approach. Capsules typically descend using parachutes and splash down in the ocean but Dream Chaser combines parachutes and or rocket propulsion to ensure a soft, controlled landing on solid ground. Water landings, like those used by Dragon, come with some drawbacks. If the capsule hull is breached or the hatch opens too soon, it can flood and sink, as famously happened with Gus Grissom's Liberty Bell 7. Salt water is also a problem. It corrodes components and damages delicate electronics which increases the time and cost of preparing the vehicle for its next mission. Another issue is safety. During splashdowns, curious private boats sometimes enter the recovery zone. Bystanders could swarm the area, putting themselves at risk from toxic fumes like nitrogen tetroxide and disrupting recovery operations. By contrast, airport runways are carefully engineered and controlled environments. Built from concrete or asphalt, they're equipped with lights, markings, and navigation tools to help pilots land safely. Using runways allows Dream Chaser to land in a far more predictable and safe manner, avoiding the unpredictable nature of ocean splashdowns and the complications that come with them. In the urgent case, during descent, when Dream Chaser is to find itself in an uncontrolled spin, it will use gyroscopes spinning tools that sense movement, and accelerometers, devices that measure speed changes to figure out where it's going. Then it fires thrusters to steer. When it gets close to Earth, the air is too thick for thrusters to work well. So it uses wings and other parts, like an airplane, to steer and land safely. If it starts spinning, like a top, it's because the wings might stall, lose lift. It can use those airplane-like parts to stop the spin and recover. This mix of space and airplane tech is pretty neat. So with all these impressive features, why didn't NASA initially pick Dream Chaser for its commercial crew program? Let's rewind a bit. Sierra Nevada originally proposed Dream Chaser as a competitor to Boeing and SpaceX 
for NASA's commercial crew transportation capability contracts. Unlike Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon, both capsule-style spacecraft, Dream Chaser stood out as a sleek, winged space plane. But NASA's decision wasn't random. According to official documents, Sierra Nevada's proposal had four technical weaknesses, including concerns about schedule risks due to system complexity and immaturity. And even though the company scored well in mission suitability and earned a high rating for past performance, that wasn't enough to win. Sierra Nevada even protested the decision to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, but the protest was denied. There's also a deeper, more emotional reason for NASA's choice. Historically, NASA has never lost a crew capsule in spaceflight, but it did suffer two devastating tragedies with space planes, Challenger and Columbia. Those disasters still cast long shadows. So despite Dream Chaser's support, NASA and its funders leaned toward the more conservative option relying on capsule designs that trace their lineage to the proven Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. Capsules have another advantage. They're inherently stable during re-entry. Their rounded, weighted design keeps them oriented correctly, shield down, even if their thrusters fail. Space planes like Dream Chaser, by contrast, require more complex piloting to safely decelerate and land on a runway instead of splashing down in a wide ocean. However, with the ongoing delays and issues surrounding Boeing's Starliner, and as Dream Chaser continues to advance in development, many in NASA and the space community are acknowledging the space plane's distinct benefits. On top of that, NASA is cautious about putting all its eggs in one basket with SpaceX. Having Dream Chaser in the mix offers redundancy, and that's a big deal. Just imagine, Sierra Nevada could bring back the spirit of the space shuttle, only safer, smarter, and more versatile. If that happens, the spaceflight market won't just be more diverse, it'll be more competitive and innovative. That's exactly the kind of dynamic environment that space giants like SpaceX thrive in, and the kind that drives real progress. As of 2025, Dream Chaser remains on the ground. Since it wasn't fully prepared in time, the space plane was removed from the second Vulcan launch, missing its originally targeted 2024 launch window. This delay came at a difficult moment as ULA had to move ahead with its certification for its next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket with the DoD. The Vulcan rocket itself has been hampered by years of setbacks, largely due to supply chain issues most notably delays in the delivery of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines, which are critical to Vulcan's performance. These challenges slowed both certification and launch scheduling. Commenting on the change, ULA CEO Tori Bruno explained, We are working with Sierra Space to put the Dream Chaser back onto the manifest when they are ready to go. And added, We waited as long as possible on Dream Chaser because we really wanted to fly them. To provide some clarity, a tentative new launch date was given, no earlier than May 2025. But with May already behind us, there's been no official update so far. Although ULA's Vulcan rocket is now fully certified for national security missions, Dream Chaser's absence from the immediate schedule is hard to overlook. Still, the setback doesn't spell the end for the spacecraft. Bruno mentioned that ULA plans to conduct about a dozen launches in 2025, split between Atlas and Vulcan vehicles, and a mix of national security and commercial payloads. With all that in mind, there's still a strong chance Dream Chaser could take to the skies later this year. So, the big question is, will it finally happen?